Right, so this is what I mean. Fucking birds. Birds, vans, planes, helicopters, fucking everything. Right, this is what I mean by getting in natural light. So this is one angle, I'll show you the other angle. But when you have it in natural light, you can proper see what's going on. You can see right into the bores, stuff like that. You can get to see all the surface texture and so on and so on. Now the viewfinder I know isn't doing justice to me, but I know that when I see the video back that it's going to be a lot better. And from this distance, I'm actually really far back. I'll show you how far back I am. <laughs> all the way back here, but from here, I can manipulate it properly. But you can see there, we can, you can see the ring bands at the top. Well, I can get in there and point now. So we've got the ring bands at the top here. You can see basically where the rings just don't go. You can see there's some carbon deposits where literally it's coming down from the head. and It's, it's like moss is carbon. It kind of like just grows. You can see there's this band here. That's the ring stop band. So this is where the rings slow down. That's the most important thing. They're really slowing down. And uh, you can see that there's this lower section here. If I very carefully turn the cylinders, now you can see, hopefully, there you can see a lot more. A lot of this, you see all this shit on here. This here, this is just residual coating. Uh, resid coatings, but not nicosyl or anything. Residual oil and stuff like that. But you can see basically right at the bottom of there where the um, band stops. And you'll notice that. This is, in a sense, the finish that you are left with. There's some cross hatching in there. That's the finish they basically start off with. And then this has actually been abraded. All this is the nickel, the nickel and of the nickel silk. This is the nickel that has been smudged and left over. And basically it's been smeared and blah, blah, blah. And then the carbide, the silicon carbide in there is basically the hard stuff that stops chipping and stuff like that. But you can see I'm trying to do a bit of both here. The difference between, and it's washed the camera out, but you can see at the bottom where these bands just stop. So if I rotate it, you'll get a better idea, sense of it, like that. Just make sure I don't knock it off because that would be fucking hilarious. I'm trying to get all the shots I can, just so you can see the condition. Now, at the end of the day, as long as there isn't some massive big guff or a big crack or something, a good cylinder, as in within spec, a round cylinder and an oval cylinder. Um, you know, we're human, we can't see that. They're perfect circles to me, you know what I mean? And uh, in a sense, that's the point, is that this is why, no matter how much, you know, these people post up pictures, and I've done it before, I said, yeah, there's nothing majorly wrong with that cylinder. However, that doesn't mean that you haven't got horrific gas blow by and so on because she's leaking like a dick um i'm gonna use that yeah might as well uh, i'm just gonna clean one cylinder no i'm not because i've run out um fucking anything wet to be honest <laughs> um where's anything where's all the Juices. Oh, the fucking juices are over here, right? Um, what's this? WD40 motorbike chain lube. Is it actually oil or is it wax? Oh, it's neither. Do some. I'm gonna do some testing with that kind of shit later, but. You just clean out this stuff. Oh, it all comes off, look. Um, anything like that, WD4. There's actually quite a healthy amount of residual oil there, which is always good. I'm going to clean all the shit off it. Ah, one thing I didn't mention when I did my video about that gold guy video. He used that fucking horn. Really, do you just need a lightweight lubricant? 
WD-40 works pretty good. I've seen a lot of people use it. And pop it in. And the trick to this is you don't want to do it too fast. And you've got to move up and down the whole time. So let's go ahead and try it out. This is my first time doing this. Looks like I've got some cross hatching already. Oh. <laughs> there you go, you see. So that's what it looks like now, if you can still see that. We're in shot. Yeah, it's this cylinder. Obviously, you just watch me do it. I can't see and do three things at once. Um, but yeah, he uses them brushes. The brushes stones. Complete fucking waste of time, don't bother. <laughs> you can get ball horns, so it looks like a toilet, and it looks like, I don't know, the Incredible Hulk's toilet brushes are quite a, a full-on bad boy. And uh, you can use them for glazing, for getting rid of glazing on cylinders. Yeah, meh, whatever. It really doesn't matter that much. Your rings are doing pretty much a good job of that. Putting new rings in will clean a lot of shit off. Um, and then people... Uh, two strokes. Oh, no, the ball horns. The thing I don't like about the top ball horns is there is the minimal chance possible, but there is a chance... Because you've got ports, depending how big of a cylinder you are, you could have a 250 two-stroke. And depending on the size of them ball horns, if one of them just ever so slightly, so imagine you've got your port like that, if one ever so slightly just pushes past, you can't probably see what the fuck I'm pointing at. Master of Zoom. And I'm going Master of Zoom because it doesn't matter if it's in or out, you see, I'm a fucking legend. <laughs> but anyway, so if you have a cylinder, a port, just say, just say this is the port, and one of them balls creeps out into it and then comes up as you, you're honing in and out one of them ball horns. Generally what happens is it whacks the edge and it chips the nickersill off. It can chip the nickersill off. It's very brittle stuff. It's very hard. Yep, exactly. And um, then, then you just think, oh, what the fucking hell was the point in that? You know what I mean? Um, Honing is something that needs to be done properly. Them stupid brushes with them things. And that gold guy, not taking the piss out of him, you know, he doesn't know these things. But that's a waste of money. He might as well spend it on something else. Um, because they, he, he does it for a couple of seconds and goes, oh, that makes no fucking difference. And yes, exactly. Proper horns have timed strokes. Proper horns have set preloads and very good quality stones. And so on and so on. Boring is what takes nearly all of the material out. The honing is it's just polishing. It's just bringing it to that yeah, micron at a time. It's just bringing it to that perfect circle as good as we can get. You know, And they are pretty good. And it's random motion of them stones, basically, that gives you that perfect circle. As long as you have a self-centering preload on all the walls, so on and so on. Um, I've got a, a, a sun in heart. Uh, not the actual machine, but I've got a head. Um, that used to put in the bridge port, but um, yeah, you know, and even then it was just to basically just eke out stuff to certain sizes. Ball horns, them stupid flex ones you put on a drill, complete waste of time. But um, for a ball like this, you know, with no ports, if you've got them brushes and you just go, vroom, 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 give it a quick go, just to clean this shit off, you know, just to clean this crap off all this carbon build up and stuff. That's fine. You're not really going to cut into the material any, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, so on. People start saying stuff like, you can't rub, don't rub carbon off into the bar for fuck's sake. One, it's nickel Number two is this has just done 91,000 miles with the metal, metal parts rubbing against it. Fucking flames and fuel and all sorts. And she's looking pretty good. You know what I mean? These things, uh, if done correctly, and with nickel coatings and stuff like that, you know, they can come out pretty good. What is that? There's like a mark. I will show you that later, but there's a mark. The same repeating mark all the way down the bars, unless that's a pencil mark. But any road, um, yes, I just had to show you this in uh, natural light. You can't. You know, you can, your eyes can, but we were, we've got no, I've got no chance and you've got no chance of seeing these balls properly without, um, you know, using the camera. Now, you know, are these balls done? Will they need, you know, stripping, ball, well, boring, replating, 
at Horn, yeah, bleh, bleh. will it need the works? Yes, it will need the works. Um, if we were going to recover that engine, try and bring it back to life. However, we're not going to completely recover the engine. Well, I don't know, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll see. But I don't have the bike for it, so it's pretty much be nice to have an engine. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, well, well, you know, but like I said, next part, uh, or the next thing to do with these cylinders, clean all this shit off. Take this uh, thermostat cover off, blah, blah, blah. And, um, oh, what's the word? We'll talk about decking, skimming, stuff like that. We'll talk about inserts. See, I'm even tempted to get an insert out to show you what the inserts look like. See, that's the thing, like I said, this engine is, it will go back together. It will run again. But to me, it's more... You know, you'd never want to put this in a bike ever again, I don't think, without doing some serious work. But any road, that's all in the future and stuff. Um, I just wanted to say and show that we... Um, oh, fucking hell. That's the zoom. Um, that, yeah, you can see these, and you really do need a natural light. You really do need... You'll see so much more. Holding up to the sky is all good. I just can't do that with a camera tripod and make sure I'm in the way and not in the way and blah, blah, blah. You know, I can only show you so much through video. So that's that. Next, pistons and clutch and stuff. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a, oh, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>